Welcome back to Hack Code. In this video, we're tackling an essential problem for coding interviews, maximum product survey from Lead Code. This problem is great for learning dynamic programming and handling edge cases with past two and negative numbers. We'll explore four different approaches. Brute Force, Outmatch Brute Force, Dynamic Programming with 1D Array, and Dynamic Programming with OAuth on Space. Let's break down the problem step by step and understand how these solutions work. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. So problem statement is, Given an integer array nums, find the subarray that has a largest product and return the product. So basically we need to find a subarray that has a largest product and we just need to return it. So the concept is not to return the subarray itself, but rather the product. Okay, the test cases are generated so that the answer will fit in the 32 bit integer. So basically we don't need to care about the integer overflow. So here an example one, we have nums given as 2, 3, minus 2, 4. The output is 6. The reason is 2, 3 has a largest product 6. So we are not returning 2, 3, but rather we return the product itself 6. Okay. In example 2, we have nums as minus 2, 0, minus 1. The output is 0 because the result cannot be 2 as uh, we don't have this like it, it says subsequence, then we can get the 2. Like for subsequence, we can skip the numbers in between. So we can get 2. So it has to be going to 0 only. That's why the result is 0 here. The same reason they said here, the result can be 2 because minus 2 or minus 1 is not a subarray. That could be a subsequence, okay? So constraints here, nums length is in the enclosure range of 1, 2, 2 into 10 power 4. This is something we have to observe very carefully. So firstly, in the best case, the nums would be in the 1 only, the nums length. In the worst case, it could go up to 2 into 10 power 4. That means to say that we can't solve this in n square. We have to solve this in O of n. If it is only 10 power 4, we could have solved this in n square. Since they had given some constant here, so we might not be able to solve all the test cases for n square. So we had to go through O of n solution. Okay. So the constraints will always give us a clue of how to solve the problem. Okay. So next is nums of i is in the enclosure range of minus 10 to 10. They are just saying that the elements in the nums would be in the enclosure range of minus 10 to 10. Okay. The product of any subarray of nums is guaranteed to fit in a 32 bit integer. So basically, uh, they're saying that we don't need to care about overflow, which they mentioned here as well. So this is the boilerplate code given. Uh, we can see that max product is a method defined, which takes nums and returns the integer. This integer is what? The largest product of the, any subarray we have. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you are prepping for FANG level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you are ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. So firstly, I would give you the basics of what is subarray. So how to form all the subarrays? Let's say if the array is given as A, B, C, D. These are all the subarrays possible. So, but how do we get that to the subarrays? So firstly, uh, basic, uh, you take this as a single length subarrays, two length subarrays, three length subarrays, four length subarrays. So basically for a given array, the subarrays are possible from length 1 to n, where n is the length of the subarray. So for length 1 subarray, we have just like A, B, C, D. So the elements itself are subarrays. And next is the two length subarray, that is consecutive A, B. And next thing we have is B, C. Next is C, D. Next is three length, so A, B, C. So we should not skip any element in between. So next is B, C, D. So next for four length, we have A, B, C, D. So basically an array can be subarray of itself. Okay. So this is how we form the subarrays and these are all the possible combinations of subarrays given here as well, but in the different order. So that is what like uh, we just took from uh, starting from A. So, so starting from A, this is the one length possible. This two length, this three length, this four length subarray. Same for B. B, uh, this is like for B, we have only till three lengths possible because like uh, we can't get like a uh, four length as like we don't have another element. Same for C, we get only till two lengths. For D, it's only one length. Okay. So first approach is naive brute force approach. So basically here we just translate our problem statement into a solution. So in this approach, we just calculate the product of every possible subarray and return the maximum product form. So this won't scale for the larger subarrays, but would give you a structure of how the solution would look like. So what are the algorithm guys? So firstly, we just loop through the array to form every possible subarrays. So why this step is required? So basically, uh, we need to get all the subarrays, right? Only then for each subarray, we can calculate the uh, product. So that's why we need to get a subarrays and then we can calculate the product, okay? And in step two, we're just doing the same thing. We calculate the product for each subarray. In step three, we just keep track of the maximum product encounter. This is what we require to determine, right? That's why we keep track of it. So at the end, we just return the maximum product, okay? 
This is very simple approach. This will definitely give you idea of how to solve this. So firstly, we just translated this algorithm to code here. So step one, whatever you have, the same thing. So firstly, we initialize the max product to negative infinity or like max net value. So why that is required? So if you compare one like two numbers over there, max of two numbers, like let's say minus 999 is our infinity number, we just gave it. And then we have our minus one. In this case, even in the worst case, we get the product as minus one or the maximum product goes to minus one, right? When we compare these two. So that's why we just uh, keep it initialized to max negative value possible. So similarly for the, if we require the minimum product, we have to keep it initialized to maximum infinity, okay? To get the minimum number easily while comparison. Next is just we are looping over this and we use two loops because we have to keep track of references uh, to it for the subarrays of one, two, three, four length, right? So basically what I'm saying is, so let's say you have this A, B, C, D. So to form this subarray, you have to keep track of this uh, two integers, right? I to J. For length zero, I is equals to J. That's why uh, we have sorting from inner loop. That's why we have inner loop sorting from J. So in this cases, uh, we just need to uh, keep one varying and keep one fix. So I would be fixed from I will form all the subarrays. And then from B, we form all the subarrays. From C, we keep uh, I fixed and then uh, we keep J varying. So same for D as well. That's how we got these combinations here, okay? So it's just the code implementation of what we discussed. So we are uh, doing I in the range of 0 to length of nums, basically. So here the index would be formed till N minus 1, where N is the length of the array, okay? This is the index range from 0 to n minus 1. So similarly in the j also, like it's from i to n minus 1, okay? And then uh, we, here we have to calculate the product for each subarray, right? So for that, we initialize the product is equals to 1. So that we just iterate to the each number we have in that range and then we get the product out of it, okay? So basically we are just iterating in the range of i to j plus 1. So why j plus 1? So if we just put j here, that would be just like uh, indexes will be formed from i to j minus 1. So to have j included in our range, we keep j plus 1, okay? So from i to j, we're finding the product. We're just using this index and in that range and then we're getting that number and then uh, multiplying it over product here. So this product variable can have all the product of each subarray, okay? So step 3, we have to update the max product if product is larger, okay? So that's why we just use the max function we have, which takes the two values and it is the maximum value out of it. So we're just giving the two values, what are two values, the maximum product and the product. So this contains our previous maximum product initialized here and then uh, the product which we just formed here, okay? So and then we're updating the max product to whatever maximum out of it, okay? And then step 4, we just return the max product form. Very simple and straightforward. So what are complexes here? Time complex is of n cube because we're using three loops. And then for each element, we're processing it like a three times, right? So basically it's of n cube. Space complex is of one because we don't use any extra data structures. We just use some variables here, that's all. Here, let me try running this. So this is for the small arrays. So when it submit this, it would give us TLA. Let's see that. So yeah, here it gave us TLE, which is standard back series, okay? Basically the array length is more, so the solution won't be scalable further since it's O of n cube, and the, so we need to optimize this further. So approach to this is just to optimize brute force. We, we can do this only in O of n square. So how can we do that? Basically the approach is same here, but we can optimize the brute force approach by keeping track of the product as we move on to the subarrays, avoiding the repeating calculation of subarrays from scratch. So that means to say that, very simple guys. So here one, two, three, four is the array we have. So let's say uh, uh, for length two, how can we calculate the product? So we keep product is equal to this product variable. So we can calculate from length one, right? Since length one subarray and for length two subarray, uh, how can we calculate? It's like two into one, okay? For length three, the product is equal to three into whatever the product we have till here, right? So basically three into this value, which is two, which is six here, okay? So for larger subarray now, four, the product becomes whatever we have till here, and multiplied with 4. So 4 into 6. So 4 is what the nums of i or whatever the array element currently we have. So that is 24. So this is the basic idea and then rest all steps are same. So let's go to that. So I'll go to them here. In step 1, we look to the array to find the subarrays and in step 2, we keep a running product for each subarray and update the maximum product found so far. This is that running product we just discussed, right? And in step 3, we compare the current subarrays product with the global maximum. So this is the global maximum, which we keep track like previous approach. And then return the maximum product, the same steps. Let's look into code. So firstly here, we initialize the max product, the same as previous approach. Next thing, we just return the nums here. So here, this is the difference. So we're just using the running product for each subarray, okay? 
So here we insert the product is equals to one, and then we just stripping from i to length of nums. So here this the uh, till this step it is same. Okay. So but here uh, instead of having another for loop, we are just uh, uh, doing a running product by keeping this product insert to one, and then uh, for each nums of j, we just multiplying it with the product so that uh, we get the running product. So previously we did using this another for loop which is not required. So here we can just keep track of this product using the same variable and basically you saw the approach it is same thing here. Okay. So on the step three, so it's like same step as before. We just update the maximum product if the product is larger. Here also we have this step right. So here in the inner for loop we are doing this one max product equals to max of max product and product. Same step here. So at the end we just returning the maximum product. So time complex is of n square because we have only two loops and same space complex is of one because we don't use any extra data structure only some variables okay. So for the previous approach we have 186 out of 190 test case pass. So when we submit this it would be an improvement over the previous approach because it's of n square. So let's try running this first to get to know if there are any errors and then submit it. So I'm running this. So it's accepted. So we don't have any errors and let's submit it. So you will see this also time limit exceeded but some more test case will be passed. That's the difference. So we see that 187 test cases are passed for this. So one more test case passed for this. Okay. This because this is this little optimization of n square here. That's like nothing much because here the two factor is there 2 into 10 power 4, right? That's why it's not much of improvement we've seen. So let's look into optimized approaches further. So approach three dynamic programming with one year. So don't get intimidated by seeing this dynamic programming, but it's just a simple approach here we're gonna see. Okay. So what is intuition for this approach? In this approach, we will use dynamic programming to store the maximum and minimum product subarray at each index. So at each index, what we want maximum and minimum product subarray. Okay, that's what our DP array is going to be storing. Okay, this helps in handling the negative numbers as a negative product can turn positive if multiplied by another negative number. So this is a basics, right? So when a negative number is multiplied with another negative number, that would give us a positive number. So the more the negative value we had before, we can get the more positive number when we want to put another number. So that's why we need to track up the minimum product also. Okay. So algorithm basic what we discussed only initialize two RS max product min product and both of size n where n is the length of the input array. So why we want it to be having as a length of input array because for each index in array we have to get the minimum and maximum products right. So that's why we should be having this as the same length. Step two loop through array updating max product of i and min product of i based on the current element. This is what we require to do, right? Basically, we wanted to store the uh, max product and minimum products. So that's why we have to loop to array and update for the each. So our target is to fill a DP array. That's what we're doing it in a step two. Step three, update the global maximum product using the max product of i. Okay. And step four, return the global maximum product after processing the entire array. So let's look into code for this. So so firstly, we're getting the length of the nums using this length function. And then we're initializing our max product and min product rs to length of n filled with all zeros. Okay. After that, we are assigning max product of zero and min product of zero is equals nums of zero. Why? Because for each index, our goal is to have a maximum product and minimum product. But for the zeroth index, we don't have to do any competition there, right? We can straight away put that uh, max product and min product, right? There is no any number left to that. So we can directly pick it. So here we initializing our result also to be nums of zero. And also here you have to notice that there is a lens of in the best case, it's always a length one. So in that case, we have it result initialized to here only. Okay. So in the best case where the length of nums is one, so the given, right, we can have a nums of length one as well. So in that case, then we, we have the result stored here only. We can just return the result. Okay. Step two, loop to the array starting on the second element. Why second element? We already done with the first element, right? We don't need to do that again. That's why we're going from the second element. That is from index one. So here, basic step what we discussed, right? So we have to handle the each element in array based on this negative or positive, okay? So if it is a positive number, so it is a straight case. So max product of i is basically max of nums of i or either like this can be a current num can be maximum or it could be maximum by uh, having product with previous maximum number. So previous maximum number is what here in the first case, it would be your previous num uh, element, which is nums of zero. Okay. So this case you're sure, right? Uh, so basically here, this uh, could be a zero previous product could be in that case, the maximum product would be just a number itself, right? 
or else this could be a negative value so in that case we have the number positive value then uh, we get the positive out of it this number only that's why we have to see the case of nums of i with max product of i minus 1 and nums of i so this would help us get the maximum product in two cases so same here minimum product as well so basically we keep in the minimum product uh, for getting the maximum product right so when two minimum numbers get multiplied there is a chance that we can get a positive number so we keep in track of this minimum product as well so same here same comparison min of nums of i and min of product of i minus one nums of i so this is the else case where nums of i is less than zero in that case we get the maximum product out of the minimum product right so that's why we're checking the max of nums of i and here this is the difference so there you are using a max product and then here using the min product so when the most minimum number is multiplied with the current negative number we will get the maximum product right so that's why we are storing this in our max product of i so here for min product also here we see the difference here we using the max product of i minus 1 because when the max product of i minus 1 use we get the positive number so positive number multiplied with our negative number would use the most negative number that's why we have this difference okay so in the step 3 this is a routine step where we are updating the result uh, out of the max of current result and max product of i so at the end after looping through all elements we just written the maximum product which is stored in our result so the time complex is often because each element is passed only once and we are using one loop here so space complex is often because we are using this two arrays here right of size n so it would be 2n and we ignore the constant that is n here okay so i got the code ready let me try running this So we see that this accept for this two small cases. Let me just summarize this. So we see our solution is accepted for all the test cases we have. Okay. So our push for dynamic program with O of one space, but still with O of n time complexity. Okay. So what is intuition here? In this approach, we optimize the dynamic program solution by reducing the space complexity to O of one. So instead of maintaining two arrays for maximum and minimum product, we use two variables to track the current maximum and minimum products while iterating the array. So basically the job which we did using the two arrays can be done using the two variables only right so here two variables could be of constant space so that's why the space complex is reduced to of one so let's see algorithm how do we do this so initialize the three variables current max current min and the result so result is something we had before as well so here we just having these two variables current max and current min addition so where current max and current will store the max and minimum product at the current index so there we use that uh, DP array to show the current index, right? but we don't actually use the previous up uh, more often there. So that means to say that we're just using only I minus one index there. So we can easily keep track using these variables. We're not accessing something like DP of I minus three or I minus two, right? So for that reason, we can just use variables. Step two, loop to the array, updating the current max and current min based on the current element. So obvious, right? We have to update this current max and current min based on the current element. That's what we did for the DP array as well, but for the current index, which is processed there. Here, we're just using the variables to get the job done. So in step three, we update the global result by comparing with the current max. This is same to previous approach. In step four, we return the result after processing the entire array. So this is obvious stuff required, right? So let's look into code. So here we just translated the steps into code. So firstly, we just initialize the variables. So we're using the tuple unpacking approach here. So here also we initialize our zeroth element of the max product and min product dps to nums of zero, right? Same thing we are doing here. Current max and current min are initialized to nums of zero, okay? And then we are initializing our result to nums of zero. This is same as previous approach. In step two, we loop to the array starting from the second element. This is same as previous approach. Okay, we know why we're doing this. And step three, if the current number is negative, we swap the max and min because uh, here also we did the same thing but in different way okay here uh, we did not actually swap it but we are considering different uh, arrays here so that can be achieved by swapping here okay so because like uh, when we swap the current max with the current min so that means to say that uh, we get the current min into the current max so current min would be some most negative value we encountered so we'll be multiplying that with our positive value and then we'll be getting maximum product show to current max that's the idea so basic thing as it's just observation based that's all and then here we're just storing the max of nums of i and current max into nums of i so this is the same as previous approach okay here we were taking the previous element in the max product array but, but here we having the previous max stored in current max only that's why we're using this variable alone here so same steps for the current min we're just taking the min of nums of i and current min into nums of i
we got the approach right here. So in the step three, we just update the result uh, with the current max in product. This is same as previous approach. We just take the max out of result and current max. At the end, we just return the max in product form. So here the time complexity is of n. Why? Because we uh, processing each element only once and then we use only one loop. And then our space complexity turns out to be of one because we use only variables, not any data structures that goes with the input size. Okay. So I got the code ready. Let me try running this. So it is accepted for the small cases. Let me try summoning this. So cool, it's accepted. And the space is also optimized, okay? So congrats guys, you just learned it. So you just learned four approaches to solve this. So for interview perspective, you can go till like a of an approach with dynamic programming. But like when he asked for the space complexity to be reduced, then you can go for the fourth approach as well. But it's all depends on your interviewer. It's not required to solve with that optimized space, okay? So the optimized time is definitely required, okay? Because space is very cheap these days. We can buy like TVs of space. And that's a wrap. I hope this breakdown of maximum products are very helped you understand the different apples to solve it. Whether you're using a brute force or dynamic programming, this problem is a fantastic way to boost your problem solving skills. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated with more coding tutorials and interview preparation. Let me know in comments which approach you found most helpful or if you have any questions. See you in the next video.